Hello everyone and welcome to our brand new series of Rev Evolution's EV Myth Buster. That's right, here on this whole series, we kind of tackle things uh, or questions that people might have regarding EVs, you know, like things like, uh, the, do EVs go fast and uh, is it true that the range is short or long and stuff, like a whole bunch of myths. And um, right now joining me on our very first episode right here is my very special guest and co-host, Dan Cole is going to tell us a bit more about himself before we dive into questions. All yours, Dan. Thank you, Rene. And that's a very good introduction. Uh, my name is Dan Cole. Of course, uh, I think many of uh, my friends would consider me a two-wheel junkie, um, usually on the roads with my bikes. I have two of them. That uh, It really gives me, I don't know, a feeling that cars just don't really have sense of freedom, but huh? a sense of freedom yeah, exactly yeah. the wind on your skin um, but of course it'd be nice to be sitting in a car with the aircon and just being shaded uh, from the Sun uh, so this is a definitely a nice new change and yes uh, as you've already known we will be talking a little bit more about um, EVs and some of the myths that uh, people would commonly have especially now that we're seeing a lot on the rogues I'm sure that um, tons of you would probably have questions about you know whether it's too complicated for one to use whether it would still give you the same thrill that um, a combustion engine would but yeah this is all gonna be unraveled in this episode and future episodes to come of course so why not let's start to kick things off then Rene okay yeah, and I definitely hope to see you on the rest of the episodes as well <laughs> oh yeah for sure okay. hopefully if, you, uh, if I do well you'll keep me on right no, so we'll no, see no no no, no. Okay. so what's our first question what's our first myth then all right um, Rene the first question that we have uh, that a lot of people would probably ask would be EVs are considered slow. That's right, that's a really good one because uh, for the uninitiated who, if you haven't really sat in an EV, you know, you, a lot of people always tell me, you know, EVs aren't that fast and so on and so forth. Well, yeah. let me tell you folks, EVs are incredibly fast for the very fact that every because everything is direct drive, meaning that uh, because there's no gearing system, uh, the minute I hit the my pet, my accelerate, my foot on the pedal. Yeah. The car actually flies. Yeah. And to give it a give you an idea in correlation to what I mean is because give you an example. You play it with your remote control cars, right? Yeah. When you imagine when you you know push the stick, right? The car yeah. moves instantaneously. Yeah. Well, that's exactly. the exact feel you get with an EV car. And I believe Dan will kind of like <laughs> oh, agree yeah. with me on that one as well. To that. Yes, I can attest to that. that as well. Yeah. yeah. So if you're yeah. talking about um, speeds that an EV can do, uh, just to give you an example, EVs nowadays they can go from zero to six. 16 under three seconds. That's okay? crazy. That is how fast EVs can go. Yeah. All right. So the myth about EVs are slow is totally, and I really mean totally, bust. Yeah. So next good myth. Yep. And our next myth would be uh, EVs are too complicated to use. Well, here's the thing, right? If you can use a smartphone, you can drive an EV, right? I mean, we've used complicated phones out there. We've got Definitely. so many different functions. <laughs> I'm sure that you probably haven't already used all the function your, on, uh, functions on your phone. Right. Um, but yeah, most drivers say that EVs are considered to be easier and more fun to drive than anything else they've owned. Because I mean, you think of all these extra functions like the, the I don't know, the way you access the interface right. you've got like different modes you've right. got like different styles especially if you've got ambient lightings in there I think that's something that's a plus right. and plus I like the fact that it looks a lot better because uh, you've got everything that is just in one screen right so uh, it can be a little bit overwhelming for yes. sure but I think uh, they are definitely not very complicated to learn and I'm sure there are cars out there that would be made a lot easier for people like you and I to get used to in just a couple of uses. That's right. And I, but to be, to be honest, uh, I, honestly, when you drive an EV car, uh, as what Dan mentioned, yeah. you know, it, it, there is actually a lot of technology in the car itself. Yeah. And I think it's just a matter of you getting used to something. It's, yeah. just, it's just like he, he gave an example exactly. like your handphone. Yeah. So when you buy a new handphone, I don't think you know straight away how to use of it. Of course, yeah. It takes you a while to get you know used to the functionality, how to move things around with. Yeah. It's, that's the exact thing with EVs. Okay? Yeah. It's, it's just a matter of you getting used to it. It's just know. think of it as another right. device, yeah, right? Exactly. Essentially. But the one that actually drives yeah. you around. Right. And I believe this device or this, I mean, EVs in general are yeah. really a lot easier to manage uh, because you got you don't have to worry about things like, you know, do I have to check the radiator? Do exactly. I have to check the, you know, this and that? Yeah. <laughs> yes. And it's a lot cheaper to maintain, which we will get into later. That's right. Okay. All right. And then that, so what's our next myth? 
The next myth we have is the fact that EVs are considered to be expensive. Okay, so this, I believe, is a question uh, which we're dealing with e economics uh, yeah. because every country has uh, different uh, you know, tax laws, yeah. different ways they price their cars. So for this one, I believe it, it is, uh, in certain countries, EVs might be cheaper. Yeah. Uh, but you can ex I'm th since we are in Singapore, right, let me give you the Singapore example. Yeah. So, uh, honestly, folks, to buy an EV in Singapore, it is it is expensive. Because for the, very f for the very fact is, before you can even buy the car, you have to own this thing called a COE, yeah. which is the Certificate of Entitlement. And that costs in Singapore right now, at this present moment, something like, how much, bro? More than a car. Yeah, it actually costs more than a car. No, it's about like a hundred thousand. Over thousand dollars. Yeah. And but recently, I think the uh, category A just went down. Yeah, but by yeah. how much? But just, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, it's still you know, but still, yeah, it's, it's just, just to it's own the, a certificate to correct. drive. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. still pricey. So, uh, and and once once you top that up with the price of the car itself, you can yeah. it's going to cost you somewhere, um, you know, shy of two hundred thousand. Yeah, okay, I would, I mean, I would just rough case. This is it. frankly speaking, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, but then again. Uh, it also depends on the car models and also Singapore has this thing about how they actually charge you your road tax yeah. based on the horsepower of your right. EV. So if you add in all these numbers, of course owning an EV in Singapore Everything is, with that, huh? yeah, it is yeah, expensive. expensive. But but that being said, if I kind of take a drive up to uh, my favorite place, which yeah. is Malaysia, JB, yeah. <laughs> owning, uh, owning an EV is really... Oh, uh, no, uh, it is... Don't even get me started. It's yeah, worlds yeah, apart, right? Is, you yeah. have one on one hand. I night, mean, and, night and day. Night and day, essentially, yeah. <laughs> exactly. And if you do the, cur the currency conversion and yes. all that, yes. you would start to question yourself yes. whether it's affordable, yes. whether it's really, it really makes financial sense Correct. to own an EV here. But then again, we all know that if you're gonna have to buy a car, right. you're definitely gonna have to fork out a little bit more. Exactly. And that's the sacrifice you have to make for comfort, right? Okay. okay. So, so this is like, so I mean, this whole myth about EVs I expand, I think it's really yeah. subjective. And like I said, it all deals with e economics. Yeah. And, 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 and we just generalize everything, right? Correct. Cars in general, so like, cars in general are just expensive to own in Singapore. Exactly. Right? So if you're gonna consider one, I mean, <laughs> EV is a great way to start if you want to. Of we, we should actually do a topic on owning a car in Singapore. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. 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 That, that'd be a whole episode by itself. Yeah. Alright, oh, okay. we'll take too long for that. Right, exactly. So, we'll okay, that let, for another day. So, let's now jump to our next, uh, next All right. myth. Alright, our next myth would be okay, this is something that I also am quite concerned about. It's the fact that EVs have limited range. Right. Uh, the range anxiety that a lot of people often claim that EVs have. But here's the thing, right? Modern EVs offers range hmm. comparable to gasoline vehicles, and the range continues to improve. I mean, if you look at it now, I think the EVs that we have on the roads, at least the modern ones, uh, can could easily run for as much as seven to eight hundred kilometers in a single charge. Right. Uh, especially since how you know there are more innovations to improve the battery uh, compat uh, capabilities. That's right. I mean, if you compare it to the ones from the start, maybe from like five, six years no, back, of no, course no. it would go for about four hundred kilometers. No, but it was like, like two hundred plus. Oh, two hundred plus. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, like even worse, right? I'm not kidding. Two hundred plus. Yeah. I was like, oh man. No, Let's be real. Like, I mean, Singapore <laughs> is only how big, right? Yeah, so, exactly. and plus we also increasingly uh, increasing our infrastructure with you know the charging ports, mm -hmm. and I'm sure. You know, in any HDB flats, you can get one easily just available there for you. Right. It'll take a while to charge, of course, yep. but uh, let's be real. I mean, um, range anxiety is a thing, that's for sure. We can't right. deny that, but it is definitely improving, and I'm sure that in time, who knows, a single charge can take you up to one, two thousand kilometers. Yes, yeah, yeah. and, and, and uh, just to chime in with uh, what Dan is saying, and I think once again, this really boils down to uh, economics and geography. Yeah, because in um, and this once again, I'm coming from the standpoint of being here in Singapore. Yeah, so for a little tiny dot that Singapore is, we have uh, and the plan is to have close to 20,000 charging stations. Yeah, and that's a really, really a lot, right? Yeah. And, and, and for such a small, small country, and, yeah. and I think the whole range anxiety when thing can be actually thrown out the window. Oh, yeah. You, it's like you can charge a car practically anywhere. Yeah. But uh, you know, if you're staying in other countries, uh, that might be different because you yeah. have. Uh, give you an example. Since I'm Malaysia is my neighbor. Yeah. Uh, you know, you have that whole highway. Yeah. So then it might be a concern because That's if you put, be yeah, it's going to be yeah. tough because that one you have to actually plan your route because yeah. uh, depend depending on the way you drive your yeah. EV, whether you're pushing it hard or you know stuff like that. That you know, the current actually trains of course quite fast. So, yeah. And plus, so that, like. I mean, yeah. uh, our roads are not exactly the longest, yeah, exactly. so I think at least in the context of Singapore, right, exactly. range anxiety wouldn't exactly apply as much as you would with our neighbour in Malaysia right. or many other countries which, you know, you pretty much just see an hour, to, no sorry, no, five hours even, yes. just yep. straight road in yep. front of you. Yep. So. 
I guess that's busted for us. Exactly, and, and limited range. So yeah, I think nowadays yeah. EVs are just pushing the limits yeah. in terms of how far they can actually go. All right, exactly. on to our next myth. All right, our next and final myth. We've got EV charging is considered slow and inconvenient. Is that true or false? Right, one of my favorite topics as well because I get, I get uh, asked this really a lot by everybody else. Yeah. Because most recently, uh, I had a neighbor who just bought a, an ICE or combustion vehicle. Okay. And I asked him, say, why didn't you buy an EV? And he went, oh man, you know, you know, I charge my car, it takes forever to charge. Yeah. So again, I told him, okay, then I did this whole educational speech on him, and which I'm gonna tell you as well. Yeah. Well, when it comes to charging uh, your EV, there's actually two forms of charging systems in, uh, in Singapore, basically worldwide as well. We have the AC charging and the DC charging. So AC charging is what we call slow charging, and DC charging is what we call fast charging. Right. So with AC charging, basically when you do charge your car, uh, because uh, the kilowatts, uh, that you charge your car is something like seven kilowatts uh, per hour. Yeah. You know, so it's very, very uh, low. Yeah. And it's going to take actually quite a while. A couple of hours. Couple, right? eight, at least eight hours or yeah. seven hours to actually charge your car. So yeah. AC charging is slow charging, and I, and in Singapore, you can actually see all these chargers all over Singapore. It's readily, uh, right? Yeah. It's it's in malls and in yeah. HDB estates as well. So these are all slow chargers, and the reason why they build this is because they can't build the infrastructure to put a uh, DC charging, which I'm going to tell you about next. Right. So DC charger is your fast charger, and in Singapore, uh, we have things. That that start from between 70, uh, kil 70 kilowatts per hour to up to even 150. Wow. And that's really, really, really fast. Okay. So if you do uh, your charge, if you charge your car on, say, I'm going to take a 100 kilowatt charger as an example. Yeah. If you put your car on a, uh, on a, on a 100, 100 kilowatt charger, yeah. and I'm giving an example, my car now is at, say, 10%. Yeah. Uh, and if I actually charge it up to 80%, it's going to take me under 20 minutes to yeah. get your car charged. Yeah. Honestly, it's that fast. Yeah. So it's just basically you parking your, your car, you know, grabbing a car coffee, and before you know it, boom. Yeah. It's it's, it's, you know, it's basically like yeah. pumping a patrol. Yeah, exactly. And, yeah. You, and you get back your full range of maybe 400 or 500 kilometers or whatever it is. Yeah. So that's really how fast you can actually get your charging done. So to me, honestly, uh, this whole statement or myth about charging is slow and inconvenient is really out the window because, like I said, you have two options. You have your slow or your fast charging. There yeah. you go. Bam. Well, there you have it. And uh, that's uh, all we have for the five myths oh, that we're busting oh, today. We're done. We're oh, okay. <laughs> We've got more to go. I was, was going to ask. I thought it was more okay. to go. All right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I guess, uh, you know, first of all, I want to say a really big uh, rev thank you to my co-host, my buddy in crime, uh, Dan here, for joining me uh, in this very first episode that we're going to have more of, of uh, EV myth busted, all right? Yeah. So I want to thank you as well for, for joining us. And if you like, uh, first of all, do remember to like and subscribe to our channel. Uh, if you happen to have any myths that you want busted, kind of drop that, drop us a DM or messages on 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 our chat or on the video on the video itself we'd be more than happy to help you find out more information about uh, the myth and also if you want to find out more about EVs as well drop us a line all right uh, so I guess it's myself uh, Renee and Dan Ko and saying uh, signing off and hopefully you'll be joining us on our very next episode of EV Myths Busted <laughs>